Uh, obviously, you're extremely excited about the uh, start. Uh, again, uh, a little disappointed in the uh, penalties, eight for 75 yards. We really wanted to have a clean game. I thought we got close to it in a lot of areas, although the, there was some mistakes out there. Uh, was happy uh, that we had some fans. I can't wait to see us after this break when we come back and we have NC State in the Dome. Really looking forward to having it wild and crazy again because we do need our 12th man if we're going to continue this run in the second half. Coach Sean Tucker, 232 yards in this game, 10.1 yards per carry. He's now seventh all time with 2,668. Just what you can say about what Sean has meant to this team and what he means to Syracuse history. You know, the thing is that Sean is so humble. I mean, I just, I just love him to death. Every time he runs, I get excited for him. I really like that when he gets out in the open, nobody catches him. That's really comforting and reassuring for me. But uh, I think more than that, he's just one of those guys that everybody roots for. And uh, I'm excited for everything he acquires and hopefully he can acquire some more. Coach, last, last season, it was a bye week that was later in the year. Now it's more earlier this season, midway through. Why is that so important with a tough slate coming up after the bye week? You know, at first I didn't, I didn't at the beginning, I didn't really think it was in a great position for us, but based off the injuries and the things that have happened, I think it couldn't come at a, at a better time. And we need it. There's things we need to work on. There's things we need to rest Injuries we need to rest because the back half is going to be extremely difficult. And it's obviously going to start with NC State and the Wolfpack, you know, after the break. Coach, could you just talk us through the decision to keep the offensive starters in coming into the second half? I mean, obviously, Tucker went down there on that first snap and did not return. So could you just talk us through your logic there? It's extremely logical. If you watch most of the games like this, you normally give the you make halftime adjustments at halftime, and you normally give that starting offense one more series, and then you get everybody out of the game. So they had one more series, and uh, when they got their one more series, we pulled everybody out of the game. So there was, like, no conversation about pulling them earlier? Not with me, yeah. Coach, I was wondering if you could just reflect on the 5-0 and start. You know, I don't think many people saw this. Could you reflect on what it means to the program and, you know, just coming, like, again, from not many people? You know, I'm excited for the young men to be 5-0. and I don't uh, – I have to – I got to recall whether I have been or not. I've been around a little bit. But uh, for the young men, it's exciting. They haven't played perfect football, but their record is still perfect. And now they get an opportunity to do some exciting stuff. It doesn't mean that we will, but it does mean we have a chance. And uh, – um, I kind of like that movie, Dumb and Dumber, but uh, hopefully it'll work out better than it did for that guy in that movie. Uh, Coach, just wondering if you had any kind of health update on Sean Tucker after the game, and you know, just wondering how he's doing. Well, you're gonna get a chance to see him. He's around the corner right there. Yeah, I believe he's okay. You know, God's will, and uh, we'll continue to move on. Hey, Coach. Walk me through the, the conversation that happened at, at halftime to reduce the quarters from 15 minutes down to, down to 10 minutes and, and how that came about. You know, I've, I've been on the other side of these things a little bit. And, uh, you know, there were some mismatches out there. And uh, there's no, there was no need for me to play an extra 10 minutes and, uh, and risk more injuries to what we have to do going down the stretch. You know, we had a, a good player get hurt in that game. And, uh, you know, we didn't want any more good players to get hurt. And, and again, we have five games, you know, five players hurt. And there's, there's going to come a point where it's the, the dam is going to break. So uh, we don't wish that on anybody. So it was an automatic, yes, let's do it from me and uh, let's move on. Plus, you guys, it's homecoming. I figured you guys wanted to get 15, 25 minute head start on what's going on, right? So I thought I'd do that. Everybody could get their articles written and get straight to homecoming. I don't know if that's necessary. There was a, a mutual agreement between men. How about that?
Hi, Coach. So um, just wanted to ask, how are you addressing targeting uh, penalties on Syracuse's team, and how are you going to hope to mitigate those in the future? You guys, wow. I mean, I'm, I didn't even – I don't want to get fined. I, mean, I when I saw the play, I didn't think it was targeting. I mean, I thought our guys was low, and now his head. When it, when I saw the replay, saw the replay, the crown of his helmet was down. But I really thought the other guy kind of got the best of our guy. I thought he kind of ran our guy over a little bit. So, um, you know, it's a penalty, and and it's for the safety of the game, and I'm all for that. And you know, he's going to have to. We'll petition, but. Uh, if he doesn't win the petition, he'll have to sit out the first half of the NC State. Hey, Coach. Uh, finally got some home runs today in the running game. What was different about the blocking or just the run game as a whole in this contest? I, I just think the guys are they're, they're just – there's a lot of want to. You know, they're just getting tired of hearing people talk about it, maybe me, and, uh, and they just wanted me not to talk to them about it for the next week. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad they're tired of hearing my voice, and I was really happy with the uh, results of it. Coach, what can you say about LeQuint's future at the running back position? Hey, he's a, he's a New Jersey guy, you know, Gatorade player of the year, another one of those guys from New York and New Jersey that we recruit and that we think is, you know, good, regardless of how many stars they get. And it looks like he's going to be really good. We just have to wait and see. He gave you guys a little taste of it today, but um, I think he has a bright future, but I could be wrong. Uh, Coach, what did you see out of some of the younger guys today that came in the second half? Uh, LaQuint, Carlos, all the, you know, all the backups came in. You saw a bunch of guys wanting to show off. I'm like, you guys need to settle down, run, you know, you guys need to settle down. They, they did a good job. You, it's, it's hard to be uh, you know, behind good players and good players that stay healthy and, uh, and then, you know, sit around and wait for your turn. And uh, those guys, you know, they practiced hard this week. They thought they'd get an opportunity. It was great to see them in there. Uh, we had a bunch of walk-ons in there. You know, we had Yo, an international player from Japan, grad student from Japan in there. He, he hit the quarterback, but the quarterback didn't have the ball. Dang it. Uh, you know, it's it was it's fun for the guys to see those guys get in there, and uh, you know, based off our schedule, I would imagine it was going to be the last time that they get an opportunity to do that. So it was fun to see them get in there. Last one. I'll uh, Coach, great win. Uh, last year and, and for a majority of his career, Garrett Schrader has been known more for his legs and not really for his arm. This season, he's been incredible, and today uh, a lot uh, a lot of the same, 17 of 17 through the air. How have you seen him improve throwing the ball rather than uh, you know the balance between running and throwing? I just think that Garrett's, Garrett came in and worked extremely hard. You know, he worked with – you know, his, uh, his trainer in the offseason. He worked with Coach Beck. He worked with Coach Anai. Uh, he worked with our receivers. And if you just watch all the stuff they did over the summertime, you felt like they were working cohesively enough that they might have a day like this. Uh, it's, it's crazy because I didn't realize that he had went 17 for 17 until about 10 minutes before I walked up here. And then the first thing I thought about is how cool is that for him but then I also thought about for you to go 17 for 17, that also means that no receiver dropped the ball. And how cool is that for the wide receivers? And how that means he also didn't get hurried. He had time. How cool is that for the offensive line? So I think that all that stuff, considering that it was a good offensive performance, and I'm excited for all the, all the people in that group. All right? Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you.